This is the Hot Mix Asphalt module of the UDOT Inspector Qualification Program. Before heading into the field, the inspector must make sure he has all the tools necessary to complete the testing and inspection. This includes a string line or straight edge, a tape measure, marking paint, a measuring wheel, a temperature gun or thermometer, gloves, a random number generator, a shovel, a sampling plate, a sampling container, and an insulated container for keeping samples hot. When arriving at the job site, choose a parking location that is close to the point of placement, but does not interfere with the contractor's trucks, equipment, and asphalt placement activities. Remember that this is a moving operation which will cover large distances in a single day. Prior to arrival of the asphalt, the inspector should observe and inspect the tack application on the surface to be paved. The tack application should have at least 95% coverage, including any vertical edges that the asphalt will be paved up against. The tack coat must be placed far enough in advance that it has had a chance to break and turn black. Upon arrival of the asphalt, the inspector should observe the asphalt material in the windrow or paver hopper and check for proper coating of the aggregate. 100% of the minus number 4 material and 98% of the plus number 4 material must be coated. The inspector should take the temperature of the asphalt at this point. Obtain a copy of the delivery ticket from the driver or the contractor's representative. Check the ticket for the mix being delivered and verify the source. Write the temperature on the ticket. It is recommended that location information, including lift details, be written on the tickets also. Specifications require that the inspector determine random sampling and testing locations based on the expected tonnage or time for the day. Each time or location of sampling should not be given to the contractor until 15 minutes before sampling is to occur. Due to safety concerns, the actual sampling is typically performed by the contractor or his representative. However, the inspector may sample the material at any point during paving operations. Typically, four samples are required for a full paving day or lot. Proper sampling procedures require that a plate be placed on the surface prior to the paver. After the paver has crossed the plate, the asphalt is shoveled from the plate and placed in the sampling containers. The sample must be taken full depth down to the plate. The inspector should record the sample location and temperature of the asphalt sample at the time of sampling. After receiving the sample from the contractor, place the sample in the insulated container and deliver to the project laboratory for testing.
contractor should replace the sampled material and make a considered effort to level the surface prior to rolling. Typical compaction efforts include at least two rollers. The initial compaction effort, or breakdown rolling, should be performed with a vibratory roller. The contractor's quality control should work with the roller operators to establish a roller pattern to achieve proper density and consistency. That was my first gig. Not first gig, but first big gig. Well, that's not true. That's a good job. I did taxiway. Uh, Place. Oh, did you get? That's did what I'm doing. Get him? QC personnel will commonly test with a nuclear density gauge and document progress on the asphalt map. This effort is the responsibility of the contractor and not the inspector. After rolling is complete. The inspector should use a string line or straight edge to identify any irregularities in the surface of the map. Density is accepted through the use of cores of the compacted asphalt. Once the contractor indicates he is finished with his compaction efforts, the inspector should lay out the predetermined random locations of the cores and mark them on the pavement. Four inch diameter cores are used on the mat and 6-inch diameter cores are used on joints. Prior to sampling, the inspector must get three sample cans, three witness forms, and three Avery labels for the cans. These are typically obtained from either the crew materials technician or office manager. Apply the Avery labels to the cans and fill out the sampling date, time, and location on each can. When arriving at the HMA plant, park in the designated areas near the plant control room. Meet with the plant operator and have him or her sign all three witness forms. After the operator is finished, the inspector must sign all three forms. Remember that names must be printed in addition to the signatures.
Review recent bills of lading to verify binder source and grade that is being delivered to the plant. For safety reasons, sampling is performed by plant personnel. Observe the sampling, verifying that the sample is taken from the line running into the drum and that a small amount of binder is wasted prior to sampling to clean out the sampling spigot. After all three samples are taken, give one sample and a witness form to the sampler and deliver the remaining two samples and forms to the crew's materials technician.